I've gotten feedback that affections rule me too much, but I don't see it. I feel like I apply the principles even with my family. So how can this be true? How can you tell if your emotions control you? There is actually a pretty broad scope to your question. It's not just about being unprincipled with loved ones. Being biased and coddling people that we know and we like and protecting those who favor us are symptoms of being ruled by our affections. And maintaining a personal bond or loyalty to anyone without principles is also ruled by affections. I've made this kind of mistake. Ah, uh, can you tell me about it? Mm. It was 2015 June. I went to a church to serve as gospel deacon. A woman named Li Jie was on the watering team and we needed to work together pretty frequently. We were about the same age and we were leading similar lives. And we both had been repressed by our husbands, so we had a lot in common. We got along great. Also, I was new to that church, so I didn't know the other members and I had a lot of challenges in my duty. But she fellowshiped with me and really helped me out. And I was always there for her when she had problems in her life. Mm. As time went on, we started sharing our innermost thoughts and feelings. We had a connection and we got along great. <sighs> Later on, I was elected as church leader and we weren't in contact as much. Then a few months went by and I heard quite a few brothers and sisters mentioning issues with her. Oh, what sorts of issues? They said she was really arrogant, and when others had problems, she not only lacked patience with them, but would scold and belittle them. Everyone felt constrained by her. Oh. The supervisor spoke to her, but she responded rudely. She was disruptive at meetings. She refused to accept fellowship from others and blamed everything on other people. So she refused to take a truthful look at herself. Hmm, yes. Everyone said she lacked the spirit's work. Her fellowship was muddled and confusing. And sometimes she would bring other people down. Huh. And she hadn't been doing well in watering newcomers. When I heard all this, I knew in my heart that she wasn't a good fit for watering duty anymore. A few coworkers suggested replacing her because the church's work would be delayed. I was uncomfortable with that idea. I didn't want to fire her. Oh, uh, you cared about your connection with her. Mm, yes. Li Jie was the first contact I made when I was new to the church. And she helped me so much. We had a great relationship. So if I agreed to her dismissal, I was afraid of what she'd think if she'd call me heartless. And she really cared about fame, so wouldn't she be miserable if she got fired? When I thought about it that way, I couldn't bear to fire her. So I made up the excuse that while Li Jie might not have been doing very well recently, it wasn't entirely her fault. The newcomers had many notions, so it was normal she wasn't doing great. Also, She'd put her nose to the grindstone and work really long hours. If we dismissed her, it would take some time finding someone else. So using her was better than starting over. Some coworkers hesitated when they heard me talking like this. But they agreed to keep her in that duty, but only for the time being, while we looked for a good replacement. I breathed a sigh of relief. But I was also thinking that even though she hadn't been fired for now, it would have to be done once we found a good replacement. But maybe if I helped her out now, her performance might improve, and then she could keep her duty. So that night, I went straight to Ligia's house right after my evening gathering. And I talked to her about the reasons why her performance was lacking, and all the problems in her duty. Hmm. Did she accept what you said? She had no self-awareness and just made excuses. 
I was pretty upset to see her acting like that. So I gave her a lot more fellowship after that, to help with her duty. But her performance never improved. It stirred up a lot of anxiety for me. Over the next few weeks, a leader wrote me some letters about changing Li Jie's duty. But I just brushed her off, saying I was still searching for her replacement. But Li Jie contacted a sister who had safety concerns without approval when the police could have been watching. Then I had no choice but to remove her from her duty. The church then put me in charge of gospel work, and I thought of Li Jie, sitting at home without any duty to do, feeling miserable. She'd been so motivated in gospel work, so this seemed like a great chance to have her start performing a duty again. I raised this idea at a co-workers meeting, saying she had experience and skills in this sort of work, that she knew she'd been wrong and was sorry. I said we should give her a chance to join the gospel team. All of the other co-workers agreed with me. Oh, but had she repented? I was surprised when before long, I heard reports from brothers and sisters that she had had problems with the gospel deacon before. So in gatherings, she kept talking about how the deacon had oppressed her when they'd worked together. She kept bringing it up. Lots of brothers and sisters became biased against the deacon and ostracized her. She would go head to head with the deacon right in work meetings. A few of the other sisters took her side. The gospel deacon couldn't get any of the work done. It really impeded the work of the church. I was so shocked when I learned of this. I knew that the deacon had formally apologized to Ligia and I had fellowshiped with her. I advised her to know herself, not penetrate into things, but learn a lesson. But I didn't expect she'd keep holding on to things and not let go. Her behavior was already really disruptive within the church, and if it continued, she'd have to leave the gospel team. Sure. More and more, I kept worrying about her. And so, I fellowshiped with her a number of times. She said all the right things to my face, but she kept acting the same in gatherings. Some other deacons had tried to help her, but she had no self-awareness and she wouldn't change. It seems like this was a pattern with her. She couldn't accept the truth. Yes. And then it wasn't too long before the leader found out about all this. Ligia acted up in church, wouldn't repent after fellowship, and was having a terrible impact on others, applying the principles she had to be fired, and if she failed to repent, removed from the church. When I heard this, my heart just sank. I thought how she had given up everything and she had suffered so much. Wouldn't it be a real shame if she got kicked out? She had helped me so much when I had served as gospel deacon, and I was the person she was closest to in that church. I felt like it would be utterly heartless of me if I didn't speak up on her behalf. If she really did get kicked out, how could I ever face her again? I was sure she would resent me and get really hurt. After I thought about it that way, I told others that Li Jie did have some problems, but she'd been doing her duty and that she did well in gospel work. So maybe doing this was too harsh. I suggested giving her another chance with more help, and maybe then she would change. A coworker responded very sternly to me, saying, Sister Shin, you're not following the principles of the truth. You're caught up in emotion. Li Jie did okay in gospel work before, and yes, she worked hard. But she won't accept the truth. She hates the truth, and she's a negative force here. She seriously disrupted the work of God's house. So we can't coddle her now. 
I think you should reflect on yourself. When she said these words, I realized that I hadn't been following the principles with Li Jie. But I still couldn't bear it, so I wanted the leader to give her another chance. And then, on my way home from the gathering, I felt like the world was spinning and I could not open my eyes. I couldn't even walk. So I sat down by the side of the road and I realized that it was probably God disciplining me. So I said a silent prayer in my heart. Just then, some of God's words came clearly into my mind. God says, when people offend God, it might not be because of one event or any one thing they said, but because of an attitude they hold and a state they are in. This is a frightening thing. These words from God put some fear in my heart. I saw that my attitude must have been offending God's disposition. Mm. So I began to reflect. And then I realized that since that leader told me I should dismiss Li Jie and let her reflect upon herself, I hadn't been considering the interests of God's house. I was simply sticking up for Li Jie. God didn't have any place in my heart, and I'd already offended him. Yes. I quickly said a prayer to God, admitting I was wrong and hoping to reflect on myself. After praying, I dragged myself back home, unsteady on my feet. When I got there, I read another passage of God's words. I'll read it for you now. Good. God says, Some people have an extremely sentimental nature. In all they say, the ways they behave toward others, they live by emotion. They feel affection for this person and for that person. They feel obliged to pay back favors, and they live within their emotions. You could say, that emotions are this person's fatal flaw. All they do is ruled by emotions. They cannot practice truth or act by principle and often rebel against God. Emotions are their greatest weakness, their fatal flaw, and are completely capable of ruining them. Those who are too emotional cannot practice the truth. They cannot obey God. They are obsessed with the flesh, foolish and muddle-headed. And it is their nature to put great stock in feelings. They live by their emotions. When I read these words, I was so moved, I couldn't hold back my tears. I really was governed by my feelings for others. Mm. This was my weak point, my Achilles heel. Mm. Li Jie was so ready and willing to help me that I felt a real affinity for her. And over time, I became like a kindred spirit with her. I spoke from a place of emotion whenever something involved her, always worrying about her feelings and always taking her side. I couldn't apply the principles with any fairness. Hmm. I did know that she wasn't doing well in her duty, that it was disruptive. The truth was, that the bad simply outweighed the good. She had to be fired. But because of our strong ties, I didn't want her to get kicked out of the church. So I went by my emotions, finding all sorts of excuses to convince the others to let her stay. I even wanted to help her improve her performance so she could keep her position. If it hadn't been for the bond between us, I wouldn't have spoken up for her so much. I would have treated her like any other brother or sister. At that point I saw that I'd been entirely governed by my affections in my duty, favoring and coddling her at every turn with no regard for the principles. I wasn't considering the work of God's house. I spoke and acted based on my own feelings it was so selfish. I read a little more of God's words that opened my eyes more to this problem. Let's watch a video of them. Great.
Almighty God says, What issues relate to emotions? Number one is how you evaluate your own family, how you react to the things they do. The things they do includes when they are meddlesome and intrusive, when they are judgmental about people behind their backs, when they do the things of the non-believers, and so on. Could you be impartial toward your family? If you were asked to evaluate them in writing, would you do so fairly and objectively, putting your own emotions aside? And are you sentimental toward those you get on with or who previously helped you? Would you be precise, impartial, and objective about their actions and behavior? Would you immediately report or expose them when you discovered them meddling and intruding? What's more, are you sentimental toward those who are close to you or who share similar interests? Would your evaluation, definition, and response to their actions and behavior be impartial and objective? And how would you react if principle dictated that the church take measures against someone connected to you or who you have an emotional connection with, and these measures were at odds with your own notions, would you obey? Would you secretly continue to liaise with them? Would you still be inveigled by them? Would you even be prompted by them to make excuses for them, to rationalize and defend them? Would you fall on your sword for and come to the aid of those who have been kind to you, oblivious to the principles of the truth and heedless of the interests of God's house? This all involves various issues to do with emotions, does it not? Some people say, these emotions you talk of, don't they only involve relatives and family members? Doesn't this only cover parents, brothers and sisters, and other family members? No, it covers a lot of different people. Forget family members. There are some who aren't even capable of being impartial about their good friends and buddies. Everything that comes out of their mouth is biased. For example, when someone is negligent and inclined to wickedness, they describe them as liking to have fun, happy-go-lucky, a late bloomer. And is there emotion in these words? When the negligent person has no connection to them, their words are less light-hearted. They're obviously an antichrist. They are wicked, evil. Everything they do is meddlesome and intrusive. Asked for proof, they reply, As of yet there is no proof, but you can tell straight away that they're a bad egg. God's words say that this is their nature. They make no bones about defining them. This is living by their emotions, is it not? And what are those who live by their emotions? Are such people impartial? Are they upstanding? No. People who live by the predilections and interests of the flesh live by their emotions. I do not give people the opportunity to release their emotions, for I am without emotions and have grown to detest the emotions of people to an extreme degree. It is because of the emotions between people that I have been cast to one side, and thus I have become an other in their eyes. 
It is because of the emotions between people that I have been forgotten. It is because of the emotions of man that he seizes the opportunity to pick up his conscience. It is because of the emotions of man that he is always weary of my chastisement. It is because of the emotions of man that he calls me unfair and unjust and says that I am heedless of man's feelings in my handling of things. Do I also have kin upon earth? Who has ever, like me, worked day and night without thought for food or sleep for the sake of my entire management plan. How could man be comparable to God? How could man be compatible with God? Amen. Amen. Reading this section of God's words gave me more clarity on what it means to be governed by affections. Mm. I saw that God hates this in people. It leads us to violate the principles of the truth, do evil and resist God. True. God elevated me to be a leader, but in handling other people, I wouldn't practice the truth or treat them according to principles. I shielded Li Jie because of our rapport, refusing to dismiss her when that's what I should have done. I was using the work of God's house just to do favors for others. This hurt the life entry of brothers and sisters and did nothing but disrupt the work of God's house. I was biting the hand that feeds me. I was being a traitor. Wasn't that humiliating and resisting God? When I realized that, I was filled with regret for my actions. I rushed to pray and repent to God. Later, at a gathering, I opened up about how I'd been ruled by emotion when handling the whole situation. Based on Li Jie's behavior, I removed her from her duty so she could reflect. Mm. Without this fellowship, I wouldn't have seen how serious the consequences of this can be. I usually let my own feelings drive a lot of my interactions with brothers and sisters. I need to give that some thought. So what happened with Li Jie? About six months or so went by. She didn't gain any understanding of her evil behavior and claimed that the leader had wronged her. She told others that the leader looked down on her, held a grudge against her. The leader fellowshiped on the truth with her and dissected her behavior, but she was having none of it. She was full of excuses. Li Jie even gave her the silent treatment, directly turning her back on her in silent protest. She was complaining and spreading negativity among the others, talking about how much she'd suffered without any blessings in return, while the undeserving were blessed. Some of the brothers and sisters who heard her ended up taking her side and defending her. She had a poor disposition. She resisted truth. She did evil at every turn. Yes. A lot of people said that she had poor humanity. She had been really picky about the food at the home of her host and complained behind her host sister's back that she wasn't buying food for her. She was stingy with her money and complained about being poor, which fooled others into helping her out of love and giving her some money or other things. And she acted entitled about all that. It was as if everybody somehow owed it to her. She was a parasite in God's house. All of this made me think of a passage of God's words in A Warning to Those Who Do Not Practice the Truth. God says, those who give vent to their poisonous, malicious talk within the church, who spread rumors, incite disharmony, and form cliques among the brothers and sisters, they should have been expelled from the church. Yet now is a different era of God's work, so these people are restricted. 
This is because they're certain to be eliminated. All who have been corrupted by Satan have corrupt dispositions. Some have nothing more than corrupt dispositions, while others are different. Not only do they have satanic dispositions, their nature is also extremely malicious. Not only do their words and actions reveal their corrupt satanic dispositions, these people are the devil Satan. Their behavior interrupts and disturbs God's work. It impairs the brothers' and sisters' entry into life, and it harms the normal life of the church. Eventually, these wolves in sheep's clothing must be cleared out. An unsparing attitude, an attitude of rejection should be adopted toward these lackeys of Satan. Only this is standing on the side of God. And those who fail to do so are wallowing in the mire with Satan. Amen. This passage of God's words gave me more discernment over Li Jie. She refused to accept truth, was disruptive and judgmental without ever playing a positive role. She was a rotten apple and she made a mess of our church life. When she was criticized and lost her duty, she never repented at all, but was discontent, complaining about leaders and disrupting church life. This kind of person, who is truth-hating, vindictive, aggressive, and evil, can never be saved. That's right. She just disrupted the church's work. She is like a fox in a hen house, running amok, devouring the hens. Evil people must be removed so the work of God's house can proceed and we can lead a normal life of the church. God is righteous and holy. He saves those with good humanity who love the truth, not evildoers. Yes. Evil people hate the truth by their very nature. They won't repent no matter how many chances they get. Those who love the truth can reveal corruption, be disruptive and say judgmental things, but after that fact, they can reflect and accept the judgment and chastisement of God's words and repent and change. The church gave Ligia plenty of chances, but she never repented. She just ramped up her attacks and her disruption. In essence, she was evil. Based on the church's principles, she had to be kicked out. Mm. And so, as a church leader, I knew I'd have to fellowship with others to expose her evil doing and sign her excommunication documents. I still felt reluctant to do this to her. I worried that she'd be totally done in if the church removed her. As soon as I had this thought, I prayed to God and asked him to guide me to overcome my emotion. Then I read this in God's words. Passage 4 and God and man will enter into rest together. Okay. Shall I read it? Yes, please. Who is Satan, who are demons, and who are God's enemies, if not resistors who do not believe in God? Are they not those people who are disobedient to God? Are they not those who claim to have faith, yet who lack truth? Are they not those who merely seek to obtain blessings while not bearing witness to God? Even today, you still mingle with those demons. You bear conscience and love toward them. But is this not extending goodwill toward Satan? Is this not associating with demons? If people today still can't tell good from evil and continue to be blindly loving and merciful without any intention of seeking God's will or keeping God's intentions as their own, then their endings will be all the more wretched. Anyone who does not believe in the God in the flesh is an enemy of God. If you bear conscience and love toward enemies, do you not lack righteousness? If you are compatible with those I detest and oppose and still bear love and feelings towards them, then are you not disobedient? Are you not resisting God? 
does such a person possess truth? If people bear conscience toward enemies, love for demons, and mercy for Satan, then are they not intentionally disrupting God's work? Amen. I felt so guilty when I read this passage of God's words. I was well aware that Li Jie was a troublemaker, a wrench in the work, who would never repent. She was an evildoer who hated the truth in essence. But still I babied her, always wanting to keep her within the church. I was enabling an evil person's harm to the church's work, standing on Satan's side, going against God. Mm. Satan was misleading me with such philosophies as blood is thicker than water and man is made of emotions. I'd always valued connections with others, thinking it's the way to be a humane good person. I thought anything else was heartless and I'd be rejected. That was absolutely ludicrous of me. Those worldly philosophies appear to be right and they fit with human notions, but they go against the truth and the principles. You're right. If we are sentimental and loving toward everyone else, it's a foolish way to love others and unprincipled. Sure. God asks us to be principled with others, to be loving with brothers and sisters, and have a conscience with God to reject evildoers, demons, and Satan. Isn't being sentimental with those wicked people foolish and muddle-headed? Mm. That kind of love lacks discernment and principles. It's foolish. It doesn't just lead us astray. We might go along with the evildoer harming the church's work. Mm. Thank God. You've got a great understanding. And now I see, we can't get lost in our emotions. But we need to be careful about who we show love to and who we must reject. We have to be principled. Mm. Yes. I saw I was living by satanic philosophies, and it was foolish, undignified. I knew Li Jie wouldn't accept the truth, that she was an evildoer disrupting the church, and she needed to be removed. But I was stuck in my feelings, restrained by my affections. I coddled her over and over. It was painful and exhausting and limiting for me. And I wasn't practicing truths I understood. I was fighting against God. I was enjoying God's grace and salvation, but at the same time, I was working against Him, shielding Satan and an evildoer. I really lacked conscience and reason. It finally became clear to me that being ruled by emotion is turning your back on God and the truth. Then I thought that for years, God has done so much work in me and has paid such a price. I hadn't given him anything in return, but had stood on Satan's side against him. When I thought about it that way, I was filled with regret and guilt. So then, I read a passage of God's words in my devotionals after that. I'll read it. God says, By what principle do God's words ask that people treat others? Love what God loves, hate what God hates. This is the principle to observe. God loves those who pursue the truth and are able to follow His will. These are the people that we should love those who cannot do God's will, but hate and rebel against God. These people are despised by God, and we should despise them too. This is what God asks of man. Lord Jesus said during the Age of Grace, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. This saying existed back in the Age of Grace, and now God's words are even more apt. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. This cuts to the chase. Yet, people often cannot appreciate the meaning of these words. Amen. That helped clarify this principle to practice. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. 
Only those who have true faith, pursue the truth, and are devoted in their duty are the ones deserving of our love. Those who refuse to accept the truth but are always disruptive in the church, who hate the truth and who hate God, are evildoers, non-believers, demons, and Satan. They deserve our disgust and rejection. According to God's will, it's the only way to treat people with principles. Hmm. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. This principle God's given us is wonderful. There are plenty of believers, genuine and false, some love the truth, some hate it. That's why we must use the principles of the truth with them. Yes. In a gathering after that, I shared fellowship on what an evil person is and how to discern them, and I revealed Li Jie's evil behaviors. I also fellowshiped on the principles of removing somebody out of the church. And once they all understood, they exposed Li Jie's evil doing. So she was ultimately kicked out. Thanks be to God. I was really filled with gratitude toward God after all of that. If it hadn't been for what God revealed in the judgment of His words, I'd still be living by those satanic philosophies, showing blind compassion to others, unable to tell good from evil, right from wrong, standing on Satan's side against God. God's words showed me the danger and consequences of being ruled by affection and helped me escape the bonds of affection so I can live by principles of the truth. Hmm. I'm so grateful for God's love and for His salvation. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.